Crew Squad fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World, and today we are here at Prater, the amusement park here in Vienna, Austria. And today we're going to talk about are some of the don'ts of visiting Vienna, because there's a lot of things you want to do. Like, yes, you do want to go take the Riesenrad, you want to take the Ferris wheel when you come here to Prater, and you do want to go see all the great museums that are here, and all these things, but there are some don'ts you want to know, okay? And my first don't, and one that will actually get you in trouble with the locals, is don't be allowed tourists. Look, when you're here in Vienna, I mean, it is a quiet city. I mean, it's quiet. Like here at the cafes, people have conversations and they're quiet and they're just sitting there enjoying their coffee and their amazing cakes and stuff like that, but it's quiet. You're on the public transportation, it's quiet. You see a group of school kids walking down the street, it's quiet. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm just amazingly quiet here. And you as a tourist are expected to be quiet as well. So if you think everyone wants to hear your FaceTime conversation with your boyfriend back home, uh, at the cafe, no, they don't. If they, do you think they want to hear your conversation with your parents back home saying, oh, mom, I'm having a great time here. Vienna's got all these cool museums, man, this is awesome. Yeah, no, no one's gonna like that. And don't be surprised the locals come and actually call you out on, say, hey, hush. Or they'll do, psh, psh. You know how we go, shh, psh, 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 psh. Like, so they'll do that to you. They're like, hey, I'm doing something here. Don't interrupt my conversation and stuff. So do have a heads up for that, because that's one thing that I see the locals get a bit frustrated with the tourists for. Another thing that really frustrates the locals with the tourists is actually to do with the escalators in the U-Bahn or the subway, and that is don't stand on the left side of the escalator. Look, when you take the escalators up or down to the U-Bahns or the trains or anything, S-Bahns, anything here in Vienna, remember, on the right, you stand and it goes down. If you want to go fast, you go on the left. So if you're on the left, are your bags on the left? The locals gonna get pissed off at you and they're gonna say something. They might push your bag out of the way or something because hey, we're coming through here, all right? So help out the Austrians, the Viennese that are going to work and just move your bags over and stay on the right side. Don't stand on the left, okay? Now, I guess since I'm talking about the Metro, the U-Bahn, the subway here, I guess there's a don't I should tell you from that. That is, don't just walk on to the subway without getting a ticket. Now you may say, well, Mark, of course, I mean, you have to get a ticket to get on a train. Well, actually here in Vienna, it's open, well, if you look at it's open public transportation. So there's not someone checking your tickets. There's not a turnstile, you just walk on. And so if you don't have a ticket, you can actually walk on and ride around. But the thing is, is don't think there's nobody checking because occasionally there are people that go around and vest and they'll check and say, hey, let me see your ticket. Is it validated when it is and things like that. And you could get an on the fine spot if you don't have a ticket. I mean, I've taught here a couple times now and my students sometimes like to tempt fate and not get a ticket. And you know, half the time they get nailed and there's no, oh, I'm a tourist. I didn't know I had to have a ticket. What, for the subway where there's ticket things at every entrance and there's a thing where you can punch your stuff your card in, your ticket in, yeah, they're not gonna fall for that, okay? So don't forget that. Also, I guess I would say another thing, another don't, don't think the Volken ticket or the week ticket that you get for the for the Vienna Strassenbahn, the U-Bahn subway buses stuff, don't think that that's seven days. I know it says Volken ticket, but it's not, it's a week. So a week is Monday to Sunday. It is not seven days consecutive. So if you're coming for a weekend, make sure you look and see what you wanna get because maybe what you need is a 48 hour ticket. And then on Monday, you pick up the week ticket that gets you through the next week. Now, the next note I have for you is don't go on the grass. Yes, I know I'm standing here in the grass right now, but this grass here at Prouder, you can be on. At a lot of the city parks and a lot of the places you might visit, you'll see this big open green space. You think, oh great, I'm gonna go leave relax there. And then you'll see a sign that says, do not go on the grass or stay off the grass. Or it's a picture of someone like walking on the grass saying, no, don't do that. Look, I've seen tons of tourists, especially at Belvedere, the Schloss Belvedere, where all the Klimt Museum is, the, the Klimt paintings are. People will walk across the boundaries, go out on there, look, don't walk on the grass, you're not supposed to be there. People follow rules here. And so you will get maybe a yelling at or something like that or kicked out of places because you're going where you're not supposed to, okay? And since I've seen so many tourists do the grass thing, I thought I'd definitely need to point that one out to you. Now my next note for you, because I forgot to talk about this when I was talking about the subway, is don't feel that you have to take cabs or Ubers here in Vienna. You can, no problem. I mean, they're easy to get, they're all over, no big deal. And, and they actually are pretty honest too, which is nice. But the thing is, is the public transportation system here in Vienna goes everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. Like you will get there with a train, a bus, a metro, something like that. And it is significantly faster 
taking public transportation. So make sure you check and see, do I take an S-Bahn? Is that faster to go to Wien Mitte? Or should I take the U-Bahn there or the Landesstrasse or whichever stop you want? You know, you want to think about these things because really, I mean, public transportation here is one of the best things. I mean, this is honestly probably the best public transportation city in Europe, which means probably one of the best transportation cities in the world. So don't feel that you have to take Ubers or cabs here. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. Oh, also, don't feel like you have to take the cat, like the the, 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 exp like the expensive train in from the airport. You can just take normal S-Bahn 7, S7 in. You'll be fine. S save yourself 10 euros that way, okay? Now, sadly, my next don't for you is actually don't expect Vienna to be a cheap visit, okay? Now, it's not super expensive, but it is a little bit pricier than a lot of the other capitals around Europe. So do kind of plan your pocketbook and your spending money accordingly. Now, there are things you can do to save money when you are here, like doing the public transportation, which I think is a very fair price. It was like 17 euros for a whole week. I'm like totally cool with that. You have that. Um, you can eat a little kiosk and get a hot dog or a case crane or something. You may say, why do I want to get a hot dog? Well, look on your Oscar Mayer Wieners. Well, Wiener is Vienna, which means Viennese. And Wien is Vienna in German. So Wieners, Wieners, Wiener sandwiches, as my grandma used to say, hot dog is something you can have here for just a couple, two or three, maybe four euros. You can have a, a big, huge hot dog in there or a Käse Kräne, which is a cheese bratwurst. There's all kinds of little things you can do. Go to the Nashmark to get a kebab there or get some of the food that's there. And so like from the stalls, the restaurant's a little bit more pricey, but the stalls, you get some good food for some good prices. So do look around and find some deals because it's in general. If you're gonna be going to the cafes and having your coffee and your your your, your pastries and stuff like that, what you have to do, and you're gonna have your schnitzel and stetzel and all these kind of foods, it does add up over time. So it can be kind of a, a more expensive place to come than a Prague or a Budapest or other places in Central Europe. So just have a heads up for that. Now, the thing is, it's usually when you think, oh, well, if it's expensive, then we must have really good service. Well, that's my next don't for you. Don't expect over the top friendly service here in Vienna. I mean, here in Vienna, it's more like, I am blessing you to be coming to your table. Not all the time, I and mean, there's some good waiters. We've got some good waiters here, but some other ones that's kind of like 50 50 where they're like, yeah, I'll get to you when I get to you. Because here, you do tip here, but the waiters don't make their living off the tips because they get paid a wage and then tips on top. So you'll go places and you'll wait for your menu and you'll wait for your order and then your bill. I mean, don't don't ever think they're gonna bring your bill to you. You have to ask for it to be brought to you. And the thing is, is I've seen a lot of tourists get really frustrated with this. And I've talked about this in other Vienna videos and other Austria videos. And it's important to know that those waiters and the, the service staff, they've been trained to do this. They went to school for these things. So they're usually very well versed in the food, what's what. So if you have questions, you ask them, hey, you know, I, I, I want to have Wiener Schnitzel, but I'm, I'm trying not to eat beef and, and veal and stuff like that. What do you recommend? Oh, well, you could go with the Putin Schnitzel, the turkey one. I mean, they'll know stuff that they, that you might want to know because they're so well trained. So they're very professional, but it gets frustrating because they don't really seem to care all the time that you're in a hurry or stuff like that, okay? But the thing that's cool is they don't pressure you. They don't rush you out the door. You know when you're in the US or UK or places, they're like, okay, what do you want to eat? Here's your food, get out, right? Here they're like, oh, you want something? Okay, good. Well, you want to order later? It's totally fine. I mean, they don't judge you. They're like, yeah, you want to stay and have a schnitzel and a schnitzel? That's totally fine. Stay for some stops afterwards? Totally fine. We're cool with that because they're not rushing you out the door. That's why when you see a table that says reserved, it's not like it's reversed from seven to nine, it's reserved from seven until the restaurant closes because they expect people to stay longer, okay? So don't expect short eating times, just have a heads up. Now, if you do need to go quicker, I mean, you might want to stand up and go ask your waiter, hey, could we pay please and have that? And I guess I should say another thing, and this is also in our Don'ts of Austria video. You can see that for more general Austria things. But since so many tourists come just to Vienna and don't see the rest of this beautiful country, I want to make sure I mention it here, is don't think you can pay with credit card everywhere in Vienna. You can pay with a lot of places, don't get me wrong, but a lot of smaller places, like if you want your kids to ride the rides and stuff like here at Prater, you're paying some cash here. You want to grab a, a case of crane or a donor kebab on the street or grab a bottle of water, you need to have coins to do those things or cash because they're not taking cards. Now, speaking of spending your money when you are here and how you'd spend it, a lot of people want to go to the Saka Hotel to have Saka Tort. It's a special kind of chocolate cake that's from the Saka Hotel. That's where it's invented. That's why it's called the Saka Tort. And they have that, and you'll see people lined up waiting to go inside. My don't for that is, don't feel like you have to wait in line to go have Saka Tort. 
if you just go around, I mean, honestly, around the corner, there's there's Mozart Cafe, and you can have the same, you know, soccer tour there at, I mean, with a fraction of the tourists, and I mean, I've always gone there, and we just get a table right outside. I'll have my hot chocolate, because I don't drink coffee, and, and my, and my, you know, my soccer tour and do that. And if you don't want soccer tour, don't worry. There's tons of other great desserts here. You'll eat a lot of great desserts here in Austria, especially here in Vienna. There's a whole cafe culture here. You really have to do, but don't feel you have to go to the soccer hotel to have your soccer tour. Have it at any of the cafes because cafe culture here is the bomb. You gotta go and just chill out, drink, eat, and just enjoy the culture of the city. Now, the next couple don'ts I want to talk about are more to do with specific sites. So, when you go downtown, you go to Stephansplatz, okay, Stevens Square, you're going to go to Stephansdom or St. Stephen's Cathedral. It is the symbol of the city. That is the main church you're going to go to. And you're going to go in and you're going to see how beautiful it is inside. And if you could get a chance, take the tour of the catacombs, okay? But my don't for that is don't freak out when you see rooms full of human bones because that was a thing. They cleaned the bones up and stacked them up so you will see rooms full of human bones. So if that bothers you, maybe don't do the catacomb tour. Also, you don't take pictures down there as well, hence why I'm not putting pictures up here for that. So do have a heads up. Another don't for a must-see site here, Schönbrunn Palace. That is the summer residence of the Habsburgs. Big, huge yellow palace. You see it, all the postcards and stuff like that. Totally cool place. Great gardens to go and enjoy. Just go walk through there. Little zoo in the back for the kids. I know Caleb loved that when he was little when we were here. You have a lot of stuff there. And they have a lot of options for the palace. Last time I was there, there was three options. There was the short tour, the medium tour, and the, oh my God, how long is this tour tour? My don't for you is don't take the long tour unless you really want to know everything about the Habsburgs. You're better off taking the short tour, the, the middle tour, to get enough of what you need to know, okay? Because, man, I've seen tours come out of the long one, they're like, whew, that was a long tour. So go through the short, medium one, and then you can go enjoy the gardens more and have more time there. Because honestly, for me, that's one of the best places just to relax. I mean, when I used to go to school here, I would go there just to relax in the garden. I wouldn't go in. I would just go to the back of the garden, go sit in one of the benches, do my homework. It was really cool. And then another don't I have for the museums is don't think that the only thing to see in the museums in Vienna are the exhibits. Because you know you go to some uh, museums and it's all geared so you enjoy that one picture. Well, here in Vienna, some of these museums, the buildings themselves are worth seeing. The architecture all around town is great inside and out. And for example, I was at the Natural History Museum, which is a nice museum. But man, I actually was more impressed with the interior of the museum, the building of it and the, the structure and the art that was part of the actual like facade and interior facades that I was like, dang, this is actually cooler than the collection. And you see that in a lot of places. Schloss Belvedere, where all the Klimts are, you gotta go there, it's great. But the thing is, it's a whole palace as well. So you're kind of like, wow, I'm getting like, I get to visit a palace and get to see an art museum at the same time. This is kind of cool. And so you do have that. So make sure you don't just focus on the art, focus on the ambiance as well. Now, when you go around Vienna, you will notice there are quite a few beggars that are out. I mean, not a ton, but you will pass some of them at the churches, in the churches, outside the churches, by the stations and stuff like that. And what I would say to you is don't give to the beggars. And I'm not saying I'm a heartless person. No, I'm saying there's a very good social system here in Austria. So the beggars are probably taken care of and they probably don't need the money like they say they do. I mean, I know we saw a guy that had an oxygen tank. He had the, the oxygen tubes going in his mouth or in his nose going up this way. And then we saw him later walking around just fine. Like, yeah, I don't think you really need that. Or we saw a guy that had a, had a what do you call it? a cane kind of thing like a, a crutch and he was walking around you know like oh and then later on he's walking fine i saw him going to the metro i'm like come on man and so that's why i mean even though the local police will tell you don't give to the beggars you will see the local police talking to the the the, the people on the streets and stuff like that to see what they're up to so just kind of stay away i mean they don't really bother you too much but just have a heads up so you're ready for that and my last don't for you has to deal with nightlife and that is don't think that they don't have something for you here in Vienna. It doesn't matter if you like classical concerts, you want to see world-class musicians, you want to see a band that's famous that you've been streamed for, you want to go see the opera, you want to see a play, you want to go out to the clubs, have a bar, go to a cafe, watch people on the streets. There's plenty of nightlife stuff to do here for all kinds of people, depending what you want. Now, I will have one caveat though. If you want to have more of the clubbing, party, drinking kind of stuff, you, there are a few things for that, but 
there's better cities for that. If you're looking for a big city party weekend, go up to Prague, go over to Bra heck, Bratislava, go to Budapest or even Munich. That's more of the yeah kind of weekend kind of things for outdoor nightlife and stuff. Whereas here it's more refined culture kind of stuff. You could have a lot more of that. So that's just something I thought I'd let you know before you do come here. So I hope this helps you know a bit more about the don'ts of coming to Vienna. I hope it gets you better prepared for coming here. We have a few other videos on Austria. 10 culture shocks people have when they come to Austria, the don'ts of coming to Austria, five mistakes we see tourists make all the time here in Vienna, all on our website at waltersworld.com. And also, if you like travel videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we put out a new travel video every Wednesday and Saturday. And so if you do that, you'll get honest travel videos at least twice a week from us. So I want to say thank you to everybody who watched. Thank you for all your likes, subscriptions. And again, another big thank you to all our patrons on Patreon who help make honest travel videos like this possible. We want to say thank you for that. And if you want to find out how you can help us keep making honest, fun travel videos without 4,000 commercials like me trying to sell you stuff, go to patreon.com slash waltersworld to find out how. Bye from Vienna.